Hello, this is Dr. J, here with a let's play of Castlevania II Simon's Quest. So this is my favorite of the early Castlevania games. Not like the entire Castlevania series, but of the first few games, this one is my favorite. I think that it often goes unacknowledged for being a really early example of a Metroidvania. Like, being a large, fully interconnected world with obtainable items that you need in order to proceed, and a character who grows more powerful with items and experience. This game has all the essential ingredients of a Metroidvania. Now, I will admit, it has its frustrating points. Primarily, that there are some really obscure puzzles that are difficult, if not impossible, to figure out without the aid of a strategy guide or a walkthrough. So this is definitely the kind of game that is sort of more fun to play with a walkthrough to answer some of the really obscure questions. In that respect, I certainly take points off for that, because I do think that games are generally better if the player has a solid chance of figuring everything out on their own. And this game's not really like that. Nonetheless, uh, I do think that it's, it's a pretty excellent game for its time overall, and it's still fun to play, even today. So anyway, that's enough rambling on. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, listen to that creepy atmospheric starting theme. It's so good. It's kind of strange how they use the motif of uh, a tape. Like, you know, an actual physical tape for recording video or audio onto as sort of the background image here. It doesn't really fit in with the theme of the game, but it's something that they did a lot in early Castlevania games, I believe. A little bit of a strange decision. But anyway, let's start the game. Alright, so we start here in town and we begin talking to the townsfolk. Now one thing to note about this game is that it is not especially well translated. Although what this guy says is true. And also because of character limits and the fact that Japanese characters generally express more than an equivalent English character. I guess the dialogue in the... Okay, so this is just straight up mistranslated, this line right here. If we go in here... We see that this is the church, with a priest wearing a cassock. He will heal us if we are injured, which we're not. Looking at our status screen, we have a leather whip, no experience, level 0, and 50 hearts. Hearts are currency in this game, for some reason. This fellow will sell us a white crystal, which we will need, but we also need holy water, and holy water can be used as a weapon, so we're going to talk to this guy first buy the holy water he's selling. Now we're out of hearts, so we'll have to buy the white crystal in a bit. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, apparently in the Japanese the dialogue is a lot more natural sounding, and in this game it, it is very broken because they don't have many characters to work with, so they can't really say things using natural language and proper complete sentences. And as I said, a lot of things are apparently just straight up mistranslated. So those factors make the clues that you get in the game even more confusing than they should be. Besides the fact that the game is just inherently confusing in and of itself. Also, I believe this is the first instance of Bloody Tears, the theme, in this game. In the franchise, I mean. And oh man, Bloody Tears is such an amazing track. Even on the 8-bit Nintendo sound chip, it sounds amazing. When you actually hear this theme remixed with proper instrumentation, it is so good. I shut up for a second just so we could hear the theme, because it's so good. Oh, this famous line, what a horrible night to have a curse. Here's another way in which this game was ahead of its time. Day-night cycles. Also, the music becomes more ominous at night, less heroic sounding. Appropriately so. Now we're going to go back into town and kill zombies. Ouch. Jerk faces! Get off me. 
flipping werewolves get wrecked. Oh, they're tougher at night. That's right. We're going to have to visit the priest for some healing. So one of the other downsides to this game is there is some grinding now and then in order to get the hearts you need to pay for things. It's not too awful, but any amount of grinding is a little unfortunate, in my opinion. I'm not a huge fan of it. But it's, it's not enough to become hugely annoying in this game. But if there's a long period where I'm just grinding for hearts or waiting for the day-night cycle to shift, then I might cut it out or accelerate it. I'll decide that on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, I don't think the game makes this clear at all, unless it was in the manual. I don't remember, and I didn't bother to find a copy online to read it before doing this uh, LP. But uh, there is a time limit in this game. Not to complete the game at all, but the ending that you get depends on how long it takes you to finish it. There's like a good ending, a normal ending, and a bad ending. So you are on the clock if you want to get the best ending. Now I'm not gonna try super hard to get the best ending. I mean, I'll try not to go through the game at a ridiculously slow pace. I'll, I'll try to keep a good pace up. But I'm not gonna kill myself doing re-recordings and practicing like crazy to get the best possible time. So I might very well not get the best ending. I mean, I might, but I'm not sure. Regardless of what ending I get, I will probably splice in the two endings that I don't get just so we can see them all. Even though if you're watching this, you're probably familiar with them. We are collecting a goodly number of hearts here. We're up to 76. More than we'll need to purchase the white crystal. So yeah, like I said, this is probably the most boring aspect of the game when you're just waiting for the day-night cycle to turn over because you want to, like, buy something in town or whatever. Oh, I guess I should make it clear. I cannot go inside any buildings while it's night, even though it looks like the door is still open. Cannot enter buildings. I guess the idea is that everybody's closed up because there's monsters running around everywhere, even inside town at night. But there's just not a graphic indicating that that's the case. Hey, jerk, I need to descend. Because I wanted to demonstrate. Can't go inside here either. I am hitting the up key. Nothing is happening. The sun has vanquished a horrible night. I will say, although most of the translations in this game are poor, I actually really like the more flavorful atmospheric text. We will now... Oh wait, what? I already purchased the holy water. I'm an idiot. I need to purchase the white crystal from this guy. But uh, yeah, I think in the Japanese, the text about the day-night cycle shifting was a lot more bland. It, they made it more cool and flavorful for the translation, so I do like that. Alright, make sure that we have the holy water equipped and we've got the white crystal. Okay, due to a recording mishap, I uh, had to do a bit of splicing. My bad, so you might notice an abrupt shift there. If so, I apologize. If I repeat something that I already said, then I also apologize. Uh, just, just a bit of editing silliness on my part. Anyways, uh, so now that we have the white crystal and the holy water and we have them equipped, it's time to move on. We're going to go to the next town, buy some more stuff there. Watch out for these mermen. Get away from me. All right. Let him jump back into the water. So even though they're obviously primitive NES 8-bit graphics, that aside, I do think that they did a good job making, mm, for crying out loud, making the environments seem evocative. You know, within the limitations that they had. There's that mountain range in the background and like a forest in the distance. I really quite like it. And then you've got the dark forest here. It's pretty atmospheric. And obviously Bloody Tears, as we said before, is just amazing. An incredible piece of music. Ah, I leveled up. 
So yeah, for, you know, being from a Nintendo game, the graphics are good, they're well done, the music's amazing. The game plays ahead of its time. There's a lot to like about this game. It just, it really does a good job of capturing the horror atmosphere. So we're going to go down these stairs to go to the next town. Wow. Hello, sir. A rib can shield you from evil. So that's a hint that once we get Dracula's rib, we can use it as a shield. If it were literally just a single rib, that would make no sense whatsoever. So I assume it's more like a part of his rib cage. You can use the uh, holy water to break through these walls and find this fellow. We'll sell the dagger. Uh, how many hearts do we have? A hundred. So we want to get a whip. A better whip that's for sale in this town, I think. If I remember correctly. And I want to make sure I have enough money for that. Let's not fall into the water and die. You look pale, my son. You must rest in the church. Yeah, I know you can rest in churches, thanks. <laughs> what a useless piece of information that is. I think that's supposed to say Algeba or whatever, because there is no town called Alba, so that's just a typo, I guess. This is true, although due to mistranslations, the clues have been rendered borderline useless. Also true. So another thing I like about this game is kind of the structure of it. There's multiple dungeons called mansions. They're evil mansions in this game. Instead of just like a single super dungeon. Not that there's anything wrong with the single super dungeon. Uh, like later Metroidvanias in this fan franchise, such as Symphony of the Night and some of the handheld games that basically take place entirely in Dracula's castle. Ah, here we go, the chain whip. Oh no, I don't have enough money. It costs 150 Dang. Well, I really want the chain whip, so I guess I'm going to be grinding a bit more for it. I feel like I'm not making efficient time at all, so chances of getting the good ending are plunging rapidly. But, uh, yeah, even though, uh, you know, the Dracula's Castle single Mega Dungeon games, like uh, Symphony of the Night and the Handhelds, are great. Nothing against that at all. Oh yeah, these guys take more hits here in this town. Like I said, I like that in this game... Jeez, this is a disaster. This is why I need a more powerful whip. Having to spend four hits on these guys. I can't whip fast enough. Jeez, they're gonna kill me or something. It's gonna be real embarrassing. Oh uh, yeah, the, I keep interrupting myself. Good commentary there. The, the structure of having multiple smaller dungeons is really cool, and I really like the atmosphere of the mansions, the evil mansions. I think they're quite well done. There are some artistic... Ooh, a bat. There are some artistic flourishes in the mansions that I think... Oh, wow. That was a jerk move that I think uh, contribute to the evil horror atmosphere. We'll talk about that when we get there. But I found it quite memorable. I remembered it, you know, even years and years later when I hadn't played the game in forever. Good grief, this, this is a disaster. I'm starting to think that I should have purchased the uh, better whip that you can get in... I think there's a better whip you can get in the first town. But I decided not to in order to save the hearts. Starting to regret that decision. How many hearts are we up to? Alright, we'll be able to afford the chain whip. Jeez. What's happening is I'm hitting the button too fast, and so the hit isn't registering. Hitting the button too quickly is actually counterproductive. Or did I, did I lie? Did I completely make that up? Okay, I completely made that up. I can hit the button as fast as I want. Never mind, don't pay any attention to me, viewers. Get wrecked, get wrecked, die! I guess the zombies are already dead, but you know what I mean. Become re-deaded. 
All right, this thing's gonna gun it, gonna gun it for me. Dang it! Uh, get away from me! Get, no! <laughs> I'm out of here. Bye. Uh, daylight, please come so I can go and purchase a better weapon and heal up. Good lord. This playthrough is not going smoothly, is it? First I had an editing foible, my commentary's all over the place, and I'm greatly regretting my decision not to just buy the better whip in the first town. But that's okay. Hopefully you're not coming to this channel for super gameplay, because that's usually not what you get. I would just have to put way more practice in ahead of these uh, playthroughs to... To do really good gameplay. Sometimes I practice a little bit beforehand, but not enough to do speedruns or super plays by any means. Alright. Let's go down. We should have more than enough money to purchase the better whip. We're gonna be very appreciative of having the chain whip. Give me chain whip. Yes. No, no, I was trying to use the whip to demonstrate it. I didn't want to talk to you again. Our business transaction is concluded. Chain Whip is way cooler looking. Alright, now I just need to rest up at the church. And then we can go to the first dungeon, Berkeley Mansion. Here it is. You can tell by the giant cross over the door. Heal me up, Father. Thank you. Alright, on to Berkeley Mansion, which means a little bit of backtracking. Hopefully not falling into the water and dying. I seem to remember as a kid, every once in a while I would accidentally fall in the water and die in town. Which I thought was ridiculous that there were instant death pits in the town. Where you're supposed to be safe, at least during the day. But, you know, it's old school difficulty. NES hard, or Nintendo hard, as the saying goes. Alright, so that is swamp water, which I guess is poisonous and damages you while you're in it, as I kind of demonstrated. We didn't actually lose a bar of health, but the screen was kind of flashing, so you could tell it wasn't good to be in there. Ooh, red merman. Excuse me. I need to move on, sir. Odd that the poisonous water only gradually hurts you while you're in it, but the, I guess, clean water is instant death. Alright, here's Berkeley Mansion. Even the exterior just does a good job of looking like a dilapidated old structure. And inside, okay, the reason we can see that platform is because we have the white crystal equipped. We would not be able to see it without the white crystal. Right there to the right, you can see that artistic motif I was talking about that I found quite memorable that I think does a good job contributing to the horror atmosphere of the evil mansions. The skeletons hanging from chains. I don't know, I suppose it's not that big a deal, but I just always thought that was a really cool touch. Also, those platforms have a quirk. If you jump off them while they're going up, you get much better height than if you jump off them while they're going down. So you want to be careful about that. One last thing to know about the mansions is time is frozen while you're inside mansions. Which means they're a great place to grind for hearts, because you don't need to worry about time passing and reducing your chances of getting a good ending. Okay, now this is kind of a tricky jump. And having tricky jumps where you instantly die if you don't make it is another instance of very mean old school difficulty. Which, depending on your feelings about that, could be another downside of the game. I'm not so into super high difficulty levels now as I was when I was younger. So, uh, I'm, I'm not super thrilled with difficult jumps to cause instant death if you fail them. Especially when uh, it's not like the game really has save points per se, so you lose a lot of progress and have to backtrack a lot if that happens to you. Oh, good grief. Oh, come on. Die, please. Okay, well, at least there's not an instant death pit underneath these jumps, because I'm not doing a good job. Now, Simon can really hang on by his heels, so... You can almost walk off a platform when you're making jumps. But of course it's easy to walk just a pixel too far and fall to your doom or fall, at least fall. 
Okay, slimes are some of the most annoying enemies in this game. Their movement patterns can be very hard to predict. Fortunately, we can at least kill these slimes in one hit. Wow, the lag. I'm guessing that lag was in the original game as well and isn't just an emulator thing. Not positive, though. Okay, so if we go here and use the holy water on those blocks, we can get a clue book, clue book which says a symbol of evil will appear, appear as typoed when you strike the stake. So this almost kind of makes sense, what it's trying to say. Uh, this is basically saying when you find orbs at the end of the mansions, you have to hit them with a stake in order to get the item inside them. You, you kind of have to stretch your comprehension to get that out of that mangled text. But hilariously, that's probably the most sensible of the clues in this mansion. They really butchered the translations in this game. It's just made it all the harder to figure out what the heck you're supposed to do. Alright, you armored knight. Haha, you foolishly came into range. You paid the ultimate price. Oh, this platform's just loaded with skeletons. But they're not real bright. They just kind of walk back and forth. They're extremely easy to kill. Lag. Now, an evil thing about the mansions. This is another gameplay element that you could argue is excessively cruel. There are false floors and false blocks, like this one right here. Uh, now, generally, if you don't know about them and you fall through, you just waste a bit of time because you have to backtrack. Sometimes, though, they might drop onto spikes or bottomless pits. And if that happens and you fall through the floor, which you have no reason to realize is a false floor the first time you're playing the game, well, the, the game pretty much just said, screw you, die. And the only way to, uh, you know, not have that happen is to then replay and realize it's there. So that's another element of the very evil old school difficulty that is polarizing, and I can completely understand why some people are not a fan of that. Honestly, I would call this game an early flawed masterpiece, which really is quite a compliment. I mean, I'm calling it a masterpiece. And I, I think that given the era that it was made, that's a completely justified statement. It was a real forerunner in a lot, in a lot of ways. But uh, the flawed modifier absolutely applies. Just because of all the flaws I've already discussed. No reason to go over all of them again, I reckon. Alright, so we're going to go here. Jump over these spikes. Talk to this dude. Now, what these guys are, are doing, hanging out in these mansions, selling these stakes, I don't know. Maybe they're just waiting for a vampire killer to come along and need a stake, and they're like, hey, good business opportunity. I'll make good money. But how many vampire killers besides Belmont are there running around? Besides Simon, I mean. So you wouldn't think it's a great business model. There's another clue book in here. This one says, destroy the curse and you will rule Brahms Mansion. Like, what? I don't think that's even translated right. And also it's useless. It's not even a clue. It, do it doesn't mean anything. So thanks for nothing for that clue. Alright, let's go down these stairs. I believe there's another false floor coming up. I don't remember exactly where it is. Let's watch this guy's patrol. One way you can know that they're there is if a skeleton just seemingly turns around for no reason. It probably means there's actually a false floor there. Right there. You could tell because of the way that skeleton just turned. Man, was the game this laggy on the actual hardware? Because lag's pretty bad. Oh well. Now this is really cool. Like, this definitely gives the feeling of some kind of room of great evil with all the skeletons hanging from the ceiling. I really like it. Let's equip the stake. And throw it into the orb. Pretty cool dramatic effect when you destroy the orb with the wooden stake as well. <laughs> Prozess. Nice typo there. You now possess Dracula's rib. Again, this must be like an entire rib cage, right? Because how in the world would also it doesn't even look like even a rib cage. 
You know, it looks like a proper shield. I, I don't know, I can't really justify it. Anyways, it is a shield. Uh, Simon just holds it out if you're not moving. It's useful for blocking projectiles and stuff. Now this time we actually do want to drop through the false floor. We like so. Uh, careful with the jumps, the water is instant death. How are we doing on hearts? 48. It might be worth grinding a little bit to get some more. Because again, time is frozen in here. So it's a good grinding opportunity. Ooh, gargoyle. The one we fought earlier was kind of nasty. And so will this one be, because it's exactly the same enemy. Enemy type, at least. Haha, I got him. Ooh, he dropped a big heart. Anyway, if I do some grinding, which I think I will, uh, I'll probably cut it out so that you don't have to, you know, just sit here watching me kill enemies in Berkeley Mansion for however long I decide. Phew. Alright, so I'll rejoin you when I'm done with that. No, another false floor. I didn't even remember that one. Oh, by the way, uh, I almost forgot to show this off. Get out of here, you. The third clue book. I mean, it's useless, but just for the sake of completeness, it's here at the end of this hallway. It says, a flame flickers inside the ring of fire. Pretty sure that's also mistranslated and is essentially useless. So, yeah, even if you go to the trouble to find the clue books here in the mansion, they don't really help very much. All right, I'm up to 156 hearts, which is not the maximum. I think the maximum is 256, if I remember right, in which case, why are there four digits? But I don't remember for sure. Either way, I'm just kind of tired of grinding because I don't have a whole lot of patience for it. So, time to leave. We We're out of here. First mansion completed. We are in need of some healing, so we're going to head back to the town of Veros. Which is another delay that is going to reduce our chances of the best ending, but that is okay. Because through the power of editing, I will be able to splice in all three endings regardless. Get wrecked. I said get wrecked. Ah, bloody tears. I always forget that there's not, like, another screen between me and the town, and I get surprised when this guy pops out. Turn right for Dabby's path, left for the Varos Woods. Yeah, I haven't been stopping to read the signs. Let's get healed up. Thank you! Maximum health! Alright. Alright, well, with the first mansion completed, we're going to go ahead and call it an episode there. Uh, next episode, we will go on through the next mansion. Hopefully you'll join me for that, and I'll see you then. Bye!